when we're dealing with a relationship between an explanatory variable and a response variable, it's very important to keep confounding in mind, also known as lurking. Um, they're related. They're very, very, very closely related. So confounding is when the effects of two or more explanatory variables cannot be separated. Therefore, any relation that may exist between an explanatory variable and response variable may be due to some other variable that's not accounted for in the study. Catch that? So maybe there's something else going on. So if you see a relationship between X and Y, maybe there's something else that's making it happen. So if I have my X here and my Y here, maybe there's a third variable Z that's affecting both of them that I can't account for in the study. Now, what's the difference between lurking and confounding? Well, it's, a, it's, it's more based on the philosophy of what you're thinking about. So a lurking variable tends to be in a study, right? It's lurking in the background of an observational study. It affects what's going on, right? It affects the response variable, um, but it can be related to an explanatory variable, right? So you're, you're, have one variable z that lurking variable that's affecting both your x and your y right it has some relationship with both the response variable and the explanatory variable but it tends to be in a study a confounding variable tends to be more in a designed experiment so they're basically the same thing but it, their context is different so a confounding variable is an explanatory variable that was considered in the study but whose effect cannot be distinguished from a second explanatory variable so Let's think about our example of the previous page with the orangutans, for example. So we have our treatments, which are our X, the in vitro fertilization and the, um, what was the other one? Fertility drugs. And then over here, we're interested in the orangutan fertility. But of course, there's something else going on that I cannot separate out from this namely the conditions for the orangutans or um, how captivity is affecting them psychologically. Yes, orangutans have psychology, right? So their mood, etc. right? So there's all sorts of lurking variables. Actually, they're confounding variables because it's an experiment. So there'll be confounding variables such as um, the psychological effects of captivity. Psychological, or I'll just say psychology of the orangutans that would affect all sorts of things um, the captivity of the orangutans affects both of these things right the psychology affects both of these things it affects how effective the treatment can be it affects whether they're going to take them or not so maybe the orangutans are just going to throw them at the researchers and won't take them right because if their psychology is affecting that then there's no way to deal with that or their captivity etc you can think of all sorts of things that would affect both of these that's a confounding variable the researchers know it's there but there's no real way to stop them being in captivity so we could say the captivity of the orangutans would be affecting both of these things. You can't give them the fertility drugs unless you have them in captivity, but that might also affect their fertility, see? So that's a confounding variable because it's an experiment. A similar type thing can happen in a study, but a study, the researchers have no ability to, to control anything, so, or manipulate anything. Whereas a confounding variable happens in a study or in an experiment where the researchers could have gotten rid of some of these confounding variables, but basically a confounding variable is one that cannot be getting rid of even if the researchers wanted to, or if they didn't try to, and then it's still there, right? So basically the effect is the same. It affects your ability to talk about whether the relationship between these two variables is meaningful or not. So if you see that relationship there, is it caused by, is X causing Y? Or is there actually something else lurking in the background that's really affecting, confounding what you see? All right, so let's see another example besides the orangutans. So researchers wanted to identify the effects of music on intelligence. An elementary school was identified that held an enrichment program at the after-school daycare. The children at the school with a specialized music program outperformed children in a neighboring elementary school in cognitive abilities. Ah, and this is a real study in case you're interested. So is the orangutan one. Is the study described an observational study or an experiment? All right, well that's, let's see here. The researchers identified the researchers identified the children at the school with a specialized mm. so the researchers did not put the people into these programs the students were already in these programs right and the students were already at these schools so this is an observational study 
there's no indication of researchers policing the students. That's what it would take, well, just for starters. Um, experiments are actually very involved things, but just for the beginning part of it, you need to randomly place the students. You need to choose random students and you need to place them. So the researchers did not place the students in the special program or in the school for that matter. So why does the study state that the other school being compared is a neighboring elementary school? Ah. Well, the reason they want it to be neighboring is because they want it to be similar in terms of, well, the socioeconomic background, the racial background, right? One hypothetically thinks that if the schools are close to each other, then they're going to have similar outlooks on life. So, for example, if you compare two schools in, I don't know, Detroit, near where I live, that'd be different than comparing a school in Detroit, say, to a school in San Francisco. They're just completely different areas, so maybe they would have different makeups of, uh, on a whole variety of factors. So the reason that they're saying that it's neighboring is because neighboring means they're trying to control are trying to control some of the confounding variables by making them similar groups. So they're trying to control for having some, um, let's see, they're trying to control for some confounding variables by having children be from similar areas and backgrounds. And by control there, I mean the scientific definition of control, right? So the researchers are setting it up so that hopefully we'll be able to compare these two, right? They're not actually manipulating it because they don't get any control over it. I mean that they're trying to make it so that there's a fair comparison. Right? That's another way of thinking about this, right? They're trying to make it so there's a fair comparison. Right? However, it's not really a fair comparison. <laughs> we'll see why in a second, but that's nevertheless why they're doing that. All right, based on the results of the study, would you recommend all children study music? Explain. Well, it did say that children in that school in the specialized music program outperformed children at a neighboring elementary school in cognitive abilities. So that'd be like an IQ test or something like that. Okay. So hypothetically speaking, yeah. I mean, it said that students in the specialized music program outperformed um, similar children. However, if you're a statistician, you'll look at that and say, well, no, not necessarily. Right? So based on the information, you would say yes. But a statistician would say no, not necessarily. It's not that the music program is bad necessarily. But C below. I'll just put a big arrow. <laughs> right? Why? Well, because there's something going on here. So for your X variable, we have music, right? So the music program or not, right? So having it or not having it, that's X. And then Y is that nebulous cognitive ability which we have no idea how they measured that, but sure. Right, the ability to think. Well, are there things that could be affecting what's going on? Hmm? Are there things that might affect whether a parent places a student in a music program as well as that student's cognitive ability? 
Uh, sure, money, right? Money's a big one, right? So another variable, lurking variable. I should I should have called it lurking instead of Z up above. I think I will. I think I'll go change it just to be fair. So we'll call it the lurking variable, or in this case, the confounding variable, because this one's confounding. Because that was an experiment. Whereas down here, we're talking about a study. So that lurking variable would be the socioeconomic background of the parents. If they have enough money and wherewithal to send their kids to the special music program, socioeconomic, social and economic. Um, class, for lack of a better word, right? So what's their class? Um, what's their uh, money situation? What's their race uh, or ethnicity? That might affect it. Um, what's their culture? Do they value music? I mean, I'm, I'm just coming up with all sorts of things now. Culture. Pick, pick any one of these. <laughs> That's a money sign, by the way. Money, 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 money. Right. All of these things might affect them. Socioeconomic is particularly speaking to class and money that the, those two words mean that one. But technically, all of these things could be lurking variables, could be affecting what's going on here. Right. So what's a possible lurking variable? Um, many, many possible lurking variables. And I'll just list them. Culture, class. I mean, um, societal class. That's what I mean by that. Uh, money, how much money the family earns, how much money they make, blah, blah, blah. Um, race and ethnicity, right, for whatever reason. Psychology, culture, I mean, so genetics. There's a lot of things that could be affecting what's going on, right? Which, by the way, means this is actually true. Not necessarily. You would not necessarily want to recommend your students for or your children to go into this program because there could be other things that's going on that makes it so that they have higher cognitive abilities. Maybe they had higher cognitive abilities to begin with, right? So not necessarily due to lurking variables. Let's put it that way. Such as see below. Which I guess means with that many lurking variables, we should put a big X through our original idea. So we thought it was going to be, yeah, sure, they're, they're performing better. Mm, but there could be a lot of reasons why that's happening. It might not necessarily be the music program. That said, I'm a fan of music, so I have no problem with letting children join music programs. But ne necessarily to raise their cognitive ability, that might not be what actually is happening there. That's the point. 